Airbus is now the undisputed king of aviation. While its only real competitor is running itself to the ground, the European giant has never been stronger. Unsurprisingly, its engineers are chomping at the bit to continue innovating, and it's only a matter of time before Airbus launches its next project. What exactly is that project going to be? Well, there's a whole host of directions that Airbus could take. They could build the A322, A350-2000, A221. Heck, they could go all in and just build a clean sheet A360. But a recent surprise decision by Boeing should make Airbus's choice an easy one. For their next plane, Airbus should build an A330neo freighter. Let me explain. Before hopping into it, I want to tell you about a sponsor that's really changed how I travel and could also make your upcoming holiday vacation way easier. That would be Sailey, a new eSIM service brought to you by Nord Security. This year, I've spent over 30 days outside the US. Now, my phone carrier's international plan costs about $12 a day, which means I've spent almost $500 on international data in 2024 alone. That's way too much. So from now on, I'll be using Sailey. They offer fast, affordable, and flexible data plans from over 160 different countries. Getting started is super easy. You just install the Sailey app, select the region that you're traveling to, pick the plan that's right for you, and voila, you're connected. Sailey is compatible with both iOS and Android, and if for some reason you find out your device isn't compatible, they'll offer a full refund. If you're doing some international traveling this holiday season, then why not give Sailey a try? And if you use my code at checkout, you'll get 15% off your eSIM plan. Thanks to Sailey for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Airbus has already tried and failed to make the A330 freighter a thing. Back in 2009, Airbus formally launched the type basing it off the successful A330-200. This plane was supposed to compete with the Boeing 767 freighter, but candidly, it was a flop. Airbus only managed to sell 38 units. Now, to be fair, these poor sales weren't entirely Airbus's fault. After all, the plane hit the market in the immediate aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, a period that saw slowing demand for air cargo. But even in a friendlier economic climate, the A330 freighter probably wouldn't have fared much better. For one, the 767 freighter had already saturated the market. Customers knew it, they trusted it, and most importantly, they liked its operating economics. Plus, Boeing has a much longer and much stronger track record of freighter excellence. At the end of the day, the A330 freighter just kind of occupied a weird spot in the market. It was neither as cheap nor efficient as the 767 freighter. And while it did have a higher payload capacity and range, it couldn't match the long haul heavy lift capabilities of something like the 777 freighter. Ultimately, it was just too niche and it was largely written off. With this history in mind, it might seem weird for Airbus to double down and build an A330neo freighter. That's especially true when you consider that it'll likely be based on the A330-800, a plane that's been wildly unpopular. But despite these headwinds, there are some very good reasons for Airbus to try their hand again. First, let's focus on the competition, or should I say the lack thereof. It's not exactly a secret that Boeing's been struggling. Between production issues, a painful strike, and financial setbacks, the aerospace titan has been forced to make some tough calls about its business. And one of those decisions was to suspend production of the 767 freighter program. Now, on the surface, this doesn't seem like that big of a deal. The 767 is decades old, and it's not exactly in high demand anymore. But in recent years, Boeing's expressed at least some level of interest in redeveloping the platform. If it were to do so, this new 767 MAX freighter would likely keep dominating the mid-sized freighter space. But now that the program's been cancelled, this next-gen jet just isn't going to happen, and Boeing is essentially vacating the market. Now, this decision is being made at a precarious time for cargo operators. Demand for air cargo is steadily growing, and operators just need new planes to keep up. 
Now, in the past, these operators didn't actually need to buy new planes to keep up with demand. They could quickly and cheaply grow their capacity by acquiring secondhand passenger jets and then converting them into freighters. But this strategy is proving to be less and less sustainable. In recent years, new aircraft production has slowed due to supply chain issues. So many airlines have been holding on to their aging jets for longer. This means that there aren't nearly as many secondhand aircraft available to be converted to freighter use. And those that are available are selling at above market rates. So now these customers can no longer buy new planes from Boeing, nor can they come up with a solution themselves. Now, to be fair, Boeing isn't actually stopping production of the 767 until 2027. They're just no longer taking new orders. So between now and then, they could always launch something like the 787 freighter to help fill the gap. But I want you to ask yourself something. Do you really think that Boeing has the bandwidth to get this project off the ground? Think about all it's contending with. It's staring down huge production challenges. It's in the midst of a leadership shakeup. It's in a cash crunch. It's racing to get delayed aircraft certified. There is just so, so much that Boeing has to focus on to restore the health of its business. Taking on a project like the 787 Freighter just isn't a top priority. Heck, it's not even the next 787 variant that it needs to build. Like I alluded to in a previous video, Boeing really needs to focus on getting a longer range version of the 787-10 to market, lest they keep getting walloped by the A350-900. Okay, so let's briefly recap what we know so far. Boeing is stopping production of its wildly popular 767 freighter. It doesn't have the bandwidth to develop a replacement, and passenger to cargo conversions are growing expensive. All the while, demand for air cargo is surging. It's pretty clear that if Airbus can step in and help fill the void, they could sell a lot of planes. Of course, this approach is not a surefire winner. It still carries risk. Airbus just doesn't have a very strong freighter legacy. And considering just how underwhelming the original A330 freighter was, are customers actually gonna wanna stake their future on a Neo version? Well, the good news for Airbus is that there's reason to believe that the Neo version would be a major, major step up. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. The Neo is more efficient than its predecessor. Its new Trent 7000 engines, paired with its redesigned wing, makes the Neo about 15% more efficient than planes that came before it. Okay, that's great and all, but honestly, cargo operators just don't care about fuel burn in the same way that airlines do. What they really care about is carrying capacity and price. And luckily, the NEO can deliver in both of these areas. Let's start with payload capacity. Ever since the NEO entered service in 2018, Airbus has continued to tinker with its design and improve its performance. And one specific area of focus has been its takeoff weight. By strengthening the plane's gear, the MTO of the A330-800 has increased from 242 tons to 251, and Airbus is poised to make even more improvements down the road. Just recently, Airbus announced it's going to build an A330-800 MRTT. Essentially, Airbus is taking the 800's airframe and militarizing it to serve as a refueling tanker. Now, if you know anything about tankers, you'll know they carry a ton of weight. This means Airbus is probably already working on further improving the platform's heavy lift capabilities. And then there's cost. The beauty of the NEO is that it's relatively affordable. Despite its advanced features and functionality, it cost Airbus just $2 billion to develop, and creating a freighter version probably wouldn't cost all that much more. Airbus can then pass off these savings to their freighter customers. Okay, so the NEO platform is clearly better than its predecessor, but Airbus is still gonna have to battle one major obstacle, history. Over the years, Boeing has dominated the air cargo space, controlling roughly 90% of the new freighter market. It's been Boeing, not Airbus, that customers have trusted time and time again. And even if Airbus is the only option on the market, Convincing these customers to switch is going to be no easy task. But the A350 freighter is helping Airbus change the narrative. 
Launched back in 2021, this jet has done something that no Airbus freighter has done before, really truly challenge Boeing. It's almost split the large freighter market with the 777-8 freighter. And when you consider just how widely adopted the original 777 freighter has been, this is a major coup. The fact that more and more carriers are embracing the A350 freighter is giving Airbus renewed credibility in the cargo space, and this momentum could help to boost the A330 Neo freighter. At the end of the day, the Neo freighter should stand head and shoulders above the planes that came before it. Not only that, but it would be hitting the market when customers really need it, it would do so completely unchallenged, and it would ride the momentum of Airbus's renewed freighter confidence. So while it might not seem like the obvious choice to be Airbus's next project, the 330neo freighter could work wonders and help Airbus cement its place in the cargo space. So, what do you guys think? Should Airbus build the 330neo freighter, or would their time be better served focusing on something like a A350 stretch or an A221? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Oh, and if you want to see a unique behind-the-scenes tour of an A330neo flight test vehicle, then be sure to check out this video right here. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.